My name is Vlastimil and uh, you might remember me from the movies How I Deleted the Slope Allocator and its sequel How I Deleted the Slab Allocator. Uh, now I maintain the remaining slab allocator and um, active in other parts of the MM as well. But uh, I've been talking about the deleting of the slab allocators for past two years, so uh, I decided to uh, change the subject. And uh, one kind of talks I also like is to present something between debugging and explaining kernel internals, uh, which is always a great opportunity to dig into the sources and the history and check even the detail, details I wouldn't check otherwise and learn something myself, including things I wish I wouldn't learn. And that's exactly what happened also in this talk. And if you're confused about the bad grammar in the title, that means uh, you're too young to remember the internet meme from around 2000, which references some badly translated uh, Japanese game, video game from late 80s. Of course, back then it wasn't all your memory, but all your base pages, because there were no huge pages yet, and Linux even didn't exist back then. And uh, I couldn't resist the urge to put some more memorable lines in the slides, so apologize in advance for that. Uh, so if you want to know what what's happening on your system, who's using your memory, maybe today you have some graphical dashboard as part of your desktop environment, but the most basic thing is the command called free, uh, which uh, today, uh, if you run it, it, it uh, it gives you this kind of output. I've set it up to uh, on my desktop machine at home to output in megabytes. And you could see that there's total memory. And maybe you would expect that the used memory and free memory would add up to the total memory, because that sounds logical. But oops, it's not uh, like this. I mean, I think it, uh, it might have been different in the past, but today it doesn't uh, uh, really add up. So what's happening here is you might know that uh, one of the memory management principles of Linux kernel is that unused memory is wasted memory. So so if, if you access some file like reading, writing, or accessing a memory mapped file, and you bring it from the disk to the memory, it will try to keep it there until the memory is needed for something else. And only when uh, it's needed for something else that is discarded. So this thing is called the page cache. And used here actually tries to say how much is occupied that cannot be easily discarded. Otherwise, the number wouldn't be really useful anymore. Because after the system would be running off for a while, you would always have enough page cache uh, to cache data that it would always look like it's almost uh, close to the uh, total memory is being used. So without uh, digging into the source code of the free command, we could try to like uh, device ourselves, OK, how, how does it work then? And we might try to consider, I've talked about the page cache, so maybe that's this field. So. Maybe the memory is actually used or free, or it's the page cache, and maybe that adds up to the total. No, it's closer, but not still not a perfect match. So maybe the available field is free plus the cache. Uh, again, it's close, but not exactly. So maybe the used and available is actually total. And turns out that, yes, uh, modulo some rounding error because of the conversion to megabytes uh, it seems we are uh, getting somewhere here. But right now, we still don't know what available exactly means and uh, what shared means. And uh, this was the free command, which is user space tool. So of course, it has to get the information somewhere from the kernel. 
and the way it does is the kernel exports uh, proc meminfo with all these fields, much more than the free shows. And it's actually so much that uh, I, even though I put it in three columns, it's still quite small. So let's remove the title and it's still quite a lot of text. So let's just uh, remove some of the fields before discussing the rest. So these fields are not saying what memory is used. It's only kernel internal thing uh, that somehow describes the memory fragmentation of the kernel direct mapping, but that's not uh, very useful for us. Uh, for huge pages, uh, the huge TLBFS pages, we have some kind of accounting that that distinguishes between free and reserved ones, and that's again something beyond the scope here. But there's this UHB, huge TLB counter that kind of says how much this all adds up, so we can ignore the details. Then we have, for example, something that counts how many uh, memory was uh, found as, bro uh, as broken or because of ECC errors and was discarded. Then CMA uh, uh, is something that's useful on uh, mobile phones. I know some people run, uh, use it on, also on, on the servers, but that's again beyond the scope. And unaccepted is something that confidential computing guests may uh, see non-zero values, values after the boot until all the memory is accepted. So if we discard the fields I've just described, we're, uh, we're uh, uh, out of, uh, there's still a lot, but it's now more manageable. And we can uh, compare it with the output of the free uh, and see if uh, what kind of fields uh, correspond to which, which fields in the meminfo. So total is, uh, Total is uh, total, free is free, uh, and we can see that shared, it's not completely clear because this is megabytes and this is kilobytes, but but it's uh, something called SHMAM, which I will describe later, and uh, the buffer cache is actually a sum of these buffer fields, this, this cache field, and the slapper claimable field and available is taken directly from the kernel. Uh, the next thing I try is to like classify this into what is user space memory, what is the kernel memory, and what is actually some field that doesn't represent any consumed memory, and the, thing, and the names in italics are describing something that's redundant because uh, it's uh, another view on uh, some of the other fields. So if we go through the uh, things that are not consumed memory, uh, the mem total, uh, as you would expect, is the total memory. It's not all of your system's memory, but only what's available to the main uh, page allocator of the kernel after the boot mem allocator uh, Occupy something to load the kernel and some uh, early page table in uh, hash table in initialization, initializations and other things. And uh, but most of the 32 gigabytes are eventually uh, made it to the uh, page allocator. What's interesting is that this may change with memory hot plug, hot plug and hot remove. But what I wasn't even aware is that uh, the memory ballooning for uh, uh, VM guests can also change this total memory. Uh, it's not all of them, only those that are in the kernel. So I think VMware is not hooked into this mechanism, for example. And then we have, uh, uh, I will describe the, the red fields, the kernel. So we have Z-swap that uh, that's how, that's how many memory the Z swap pages holding the swapped out compressed pages actually occupy. 
and Z swapped is how much was the memory before it was compressed. So comparing those two fields gives you an idea how efficient the compression is. But only the Z swap tells you how much uh, memory is occupied by that. Then a uh, slab allocator has several fields here. Uh, this field uh, says how much of the memory is occupied by all slabs. And if you want uh, details on the individual caches, there's proc slab info. But also it includes large K malloc allocations. Those are so large that we don't create slab caches for them, but it's uh, passed through the page allocator, but it's still accounted to slab. So if you sum all the fields in slab info and, think, and see that it's too little compared to the slab field here, it might be the large K malloc allocations. Uh, we distinguish uh, some slab caches that can shrink themselves in uh, when the memory needs to be freed. So that's the reclaimable part. And the rest is the uh, slab unreclaimable part. Uh, then there's this field, which I've wondered. Uh, I checked uh, what it's uh, counting um, and uh, found out that it's actually the same as the slab reclaimable field and doesn't add anything on top. So I thought like, like what kind of idiot would include, it, include this redundant field. So I did a git blame and yeah, it was me in 2018. I completely forgot about that. But uh, <laughs> the idea back then was that uh, there would be more reclaim reclaimable things in the kernel besides slab caches. At the time, it was the ion allocator for, I think, for GPU drivers. Now they have uh, this new allocator that's based on uh, SHMAM, and nobody else added uh, any other counters since then. And now we cannot probably remove the field because, because some readers might uh, be broken. But uh, yeah, it would be nice if uh, we found some new new uh, new kind of allocations to account for that. So if you know any, feel free to propose patches. Uh, then we count uh, uh, the stacks, uh, the memory occupied by stacks, which is not the user space uh, stacks, but kernel stacks. But also every user space process has a kernel stack because when it makes a syscall, or I think even in the case of interrupt, it's uh, uh, the execution switches to the kernel stack. Then we have page tables that, uh, that are used by the processes. So we can see some of the fields are uh, like, uh, ec you could say it's a kernel memory, but it's allocated on behalf of user space. So there's not always a clear distinction. And yeah, if this is unusually high, then uh, it means some process might be intentionally fragmenting its address space to like occupy as much page, much page tables as possible. If you have IOMMU or running KVM guests, they sometimes create secondary page tables and those have a separate counter. Then there's something called NFS unstable, which is historical. I didn't uh, check what exactly it does, but now it's hard-coded zero because it's again something we introduced sometimes and cannot remove it anymore. Then we have bounce IO buffers, which should be used only temporarily to I think you do some IO or DMA when it's not possible to do zero copy. Something similar exists for uh, fuse, fuse file systems called writeback TMP, but unless it's the only user, so that's again something uh, it will temporarily allocate to uh, writeback uh, uh, the files to the, to the uh, underlying storage. Then uh, there's this interesting thing called committed committed AS, where the AS I wasn't uh, 
able to find what exactly it means, but I assume it means address spaces because it's the size of the areas of the virtual memory areas of all processes and only a subset of those areas that can somehow contribute uh, uh, to uh, to memory usage like sh shared ones are not accounted into that but private ones are and have to be writable so basically any areas that where the user space process uh, can uh, incur some uh, fault in some memory that's private to it. And we'll see examples of that later. And uh, another related field is commit limit, which uh, should mean that, uh, that it should be a limit for this field, but you can see this one is already larger than that one, so uh, so why isn't the kernel already killing my wasn't the kernel already killing my processes? Uh, yeah, it's because this commit limit only applies when you run the system in the over COVID never kind of mode, which is uh, set by the CTL and. Uh, yeah, and the limit defaults to half the RAM plus plus all of swap, but uh, I don't think anyone runs normally in this mode. So, so even though this limit seems breached, then uh, nothing happens. Might be, maybe it might be interesting. What would happen if I change the mode, and I was already over the limit? But yeah, I didn't try that. Maybe I sh not now, but. <laughs> maybe uh, sometimes yeah then we have this kind of useless field that says how much of uh, the virtual address space is used for vm malloc allocations in the kernel which uh, is not useful because as i saw it's 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 only outputting the result of some define VM alloc, uh, I don't know, total, and it's a build time constant, so that's not useful at all. And it, it, it's a size of a virtual address space, not, not how much is actually occupied, and I'm not sure why we ever started to uh, print this. Uh, what's more useful is the VM alloc used, and that's how much uh, memory is actually occupied in the kernel by these VM alloc allocations. And there's this VM alloc chunk that probably uh, used to mean something, but now it's also hard coded as zero. So yeah, lots of technical depth we cannot probably do anything about now. And uh, per CPU is useful because the kernel uses a lot of per CPU variables, which have to be also stored somewhere, and we can know uh, how much memory is used by that and whether there's somebody leaking this kind of memory. Yeah, so that was the, the red fields, the kernel fields. So what about the, the, the green ones? So you, you could see that uh, there are things like uh, anon and file and active and inactive. So I will briefly uh, say what, what this means. So we distinguish anonymous pages that the processes uh, allocate mainly by MAP with MAP private and MAP anonymous. And uh, when they access these areas, the pages are allocated and are private to the process, and when the process exits, this is all deallocated. Uh, sometimes they can become shared, we will see later. And uh, yeah, if the memory is so low that we need to get rid of these anonymous pages, they have to be swapped out to the swap partitions or files, because there are no real files on the file system that would hold the data. 
Then as I said, we have this page cache, which the kernel tries to uh, keep around if possible, and it's all pages backed by files on a file system, uh, or in the case of the buffers part, it's, uh, it's backed by a block device, like if you DD to a block device or from a block device, you might be uh, like creating pages of this type in the kernel. And uh, the lifetime of those are independent of the processes. The, the cache can be can, kept around uh, even if no process currently maps it. And it's easy to discard it if uh, if there it's, it's the data is not dirty, otherwise it has to be right back first. But it doesn't need to go to any swap or anything. Then there's the shared mem, SH mem or TMPFS, that's kind of a hybrid between these two because we count it in the page cache counters but, and yeah, it's TMPFS so it's in the dev SH mem or used also for some kind of shared anonymous mappings or some Sys5 uh, uh, API for uh, shared memory. So it behaves a lot of like page cache because it can exist in the, at least here, even without any processes. But since uh, there are no files on a persistent file system that would back this SHMEM, it has to be swapped like anonymous pages. So if we uh, uh, look at the, the counters related to what I've just described in detail, I tried to like uh, show its their relations with something like Venn diagram. So we have anon pages, which says how many pages are uh, of the anonymous type. That means some uh, some processes map them in the in the map anonymous areas. Some of them might be huge pages, uh, like the transparent huge pages, not the huge TLBFS and that's, of course, a subset of that. So that's simple. But if you look at the page cache, there's this cached counter that describes most of the page cache. Buffers, as I said, uh, describe the page cache that's related to block devices, not files, even though it behaves uh, mostly the same. The shared mem is part of the cache. The, the SHMEM counter is part of the cached counter, so you cannot add them up. Uh, if, if you forget that, you might get uh, bad results. Then there's file huge pages, which says how many of the page cache is backed uh, or exist as a THP. Uh, the huge pages which are now existing also for files. And the, the intersection of that is described by the counter SHMEM huge pages. So that still is quite fine, but if you look at the counters that say something is mapped or PMD mapped, then it becomes quite inconsistent. So in this case, we should take cached and buffers together because the uh, counters the subsets of that uh, can be either one. So there's this SHMEM again, and then th there's this mapped counter, which says how many, how much of the page cache is actually currently mapped in some processes. Some of that would be shared memory, but we don't have any uh, counter for that specially, so we cannot know. Uh, then some of the mapped will be mapped using uh, PMDs, which is the huge, huge page table kind of mapping. So of course these have, have to be the, the huge pages. But if I try to like combine the previous diagram and this one, then it wouldn't really work anymore. So we have this subset that's mapped using PMDs but there's no counter for that. But what we have is counters for these two intersections. So, so yeah, unfortunately that's how 
inconsistent it is and uh, whether it's useful to you or not uh, depends on what you're doing. But if you want to know how much uh, page cache is being used, then you're fine with just the cache and the buffers. Then there's another view into these user space pages that's more oriented uh, on memory reclaim because the memory reclaim tries to distinguish uh, or sort the pages on uh, least recently used LRU lists, which uh, to make this more effective are uh, separated into anon and file because those behave differently. And we also separate them to active and inactive because that makes the reclaim more efficient. Yeah, and the pages that are towards the end of inactive list are uh, to be reclaimed uh, as soon as we need any memory. And uh, these counters that say anon file uh, or anon active or file inactive can be seen as another view into how much uh, is occupied by the page caches anonymous memory. But there's the, the twist because the shared memory behaves a bit like the page cache, but also as uh, anonymous memory because it's swapped to the swap files and not uh, on a file system. Uh, it, it, it's in the cached counter, but it's on the anon counters. And yeah, if some of the memory is mem M locked by mlock, then, then it could be either page cache or anonymous counters, and you cannot uh, find that out from the, uh, from the meminfo. But we can see that if we try to sum the anonymous pages and shared memory and and the corresponding anon uh, active and inactive counters, it's almost uh, the same thing. That there will always be some inconsistencies because yes, some pages m might be on the way to the LRU list, so they are not accounted yet, and so much and so on, but it's pretty close. Then if we take cached and buffers, and here we have to subtract the shared memory and compare it with the file LRU sizes, then it's really, in, in this case, really very close. So that's another view uh, here. And if, uh, if these uh, don't match or they are off by a lot, it might signal some problem and memory leak. So uh, back again to the uh, to the overview of Meminfo. Here I've also tried to uh, use the bold font to to uh, see what what should add up to the mem total, and it's those fields that are not redundant and are not uh, gray, so are either green or or red, or yeah, the f with the exception of the free memory, which also should sum up to the total. So if we look at the uh, example I've made on my system, I have, and count the those fields that were in bold, I get to uh, this number, and total is this number which means uh, almost 600 memory megabytes of memory was not accounted by any counter, uh, which is not so bad. But uh, you could see that the calculation is not uh, trivial. You have to know which fields to sum up to get an idea if there's something not accounted that's leaking your memory. and uh, yeah, at, at some time I proposed the counter unaccounted that would be like exactly total minus this, but there was mixed feedback because apparently there are uh, some memory users that may be prominent and are not in meminfo and it would look like memory leak. And yeah, I can understand that nobody wanted to add a new field that uh, would, uh, would that would be then impossible to to remove later. But maybe this is a 
possibilities for some user space tool to to maybe the free tool could learn to give you this uh, because it's simply uh, some doing some math on the uh, on the fields from the meminfo yeah and finally what is the field mem available uh, as you could uh, remember it looked very close to the free and cache uh, and it's a, and it's really close to that because it's uh, the free uh, the page cache not all of it but but like most of it and also the k reclaimable which is these days uh, uh, equal to the slap reclaimable so it tries to tell you how much memory you have available once you've reclaimed everything that's possible and it's a bit optimistic about that all of that could be really reclaimed but yeah it's uh, the best estimate that uh, that we have and if i counted it uh, like manually from these fields but not subtract the reserves that it tries to uh, calculate with you could see that uh, it's quite close to what uh, the meminfo contains okay so that was uh, for the kernel overview of uh, where your memory is being used but then you might wonder if you know uh, some kind of uh, some amount of memory is used by the processes then yeah the question is what processes use the memory and then for them you might try to use tool like ps or top or htop which always will give you some field called vert or v vsz which which says how uh, much of the virtual address space the the process has mapped but doesn't say how many pages of that were actually faulted in so it might count toward the committed uh, as counter in many info but it's not how much is actually occupied then there's rss or res depending on the tool which is a subset of the virtual address space that's actually backed by allocated memory which is uh, much better but as we'll see it's always uh, also not perfect and then there might be other fields that are subset of the rss but we skip them for now uh, so yeah and now i would like to demonstrate how rss can be misleading and 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 how what's the better possible way to get uh, uh, a more accurate information so let's say we have a simple program that creates a anonymous memory area then faults all the pages just by writing uh, to that area then forks some processes and rewrite the areas the the area in each of the child and we could see how much uh, memory usage and rss is then used uh, at each step so we start with a mapping the uh, the gigabyte area and this in this output of the ps command we could see that yeah there's this vsz which is about the gigabyte but the rss is only uh, 1500 kilobytes because that's just the binary and some c runtime but this kind of area wasn't occupied yet and if we write to the uh, to the area in a loop we can see that rss has grown to the one gigabyte and uh, the used memory from the free has also increased by the gigabyte so that's what we would expect uh, so that's again repeated here and now if we fork the 10 children processes yeah we can see that all of them show with rss of one gigabyte but the used uh, 
memory didn't increase by 10 gigabytes or actually didn't increase almost at all so so yeah if if we sum those so those values in the rss field it would not correspond to what's actually used and only after we actually rewrite the area in each of the child the rss is still the same as before but suddenly the used memory uh, grew up by the 10 gigabytes as we would expect so what what's uh, happening behind the scenes is uh, yeah the kernel keeps the rss counter for each uh, process and for several types of memory like the anonymous uh, file pages shared memory pages also swap entries and yes yeah, the as they are faulted in the pages the counter increases as we've seen with the first process and this is exported uh, again in the proc file system and the tool like ps can read that and uh, yeah only when we populate the only when we write to the area it populates it with the actually pages and then increases the rss but then when we fork uh, what happens is we uh, copy all the VMAs and the page tables from the parents to the child uh, in, and because we copy the page tables they uh, also reference the fault in pages so they the RSS counters reflect that, that the page tables reference the pages but the trick is that the pages are not copied during the fork they became shared even though it's map private area because there's this copy on write mechanism that works behind the scenes to uh, keep the memory usage minimum until some of the children actually need to write a different data and then it's uh, only then the page is actually copied and increases the memory usage uh, so so the fork doesn't increase the RSS uh, and the rewrite of the children doesn't increase the RSS but suddenly memory usage is increased so this is the, this is how RSS cannot be always useful to see how many memory a process occupies because you might have some web browser which has some process for the core of for the GUI and then you have these processes for individual tabs and they might share some of the memory and the RSS is not really uh, might not be uh, doing a great job and the question is why is there not a more accurate counter and the answer is that it would be too expensive to uh, to keep track on so so for example at some point this pss uh, metric was proposed uh, that uh, tries to say okay if two processes share a page that's in the before the copy on write state then we attribute only half of it to it and uh, and this way if we sum sum up pss of all processes we get to the uh, actually memory used but it would be expensive to track that in the kernel because suddenly if we did the copy on write in write pro in one process we would have to change the counter in, in all the other sharing processes and it's just not worth it yet yeah, so so rss is the best the kernel has and unfortunately it's on also used for the oom killer so uh, if you uh, do yeah, if you do these tricks like I've shown with the uh, with the forking processes, you can uh, confuse the uh, OM killer, and it will not always kill the uh, right process. What would be the best uh, metric for OM killer is a related metric to the PSS called USS, which would mean that only a page uh, that 
that is not shared in an, with another process but only by the single process would be counted towards that metric and then we would know that if we kill that process uh, that page will be freed but we cannot track that uh, in the kernel so uh, another one way or the only maybe way around that is right so if we don't want to pay the price for the precise counters in the kernel we can, maybe we can pay the price on demand only when we are interested in these counters and read them and yeah this is possible we have this proc bit s maps which does statistic for uh, individual vmas and a ro roll up version which is for the whole process but yeah it's doing it really expensively it has to walk the page tables inspect the individual pages and their map counts and other attributes to actually give you this metric and by the way it needs to hold the map block for read uh, which can then block the process itself taking it from write and create a memory inversion pro uh, priority inversion problem but there's some ongoing work to address that but we are not there yet so for example if we check the smaps rollup of our demo process after the fork it would be uh, it would show it would show the rss is one gigabyte but there's this pss and it's one eleventh of the gigabyte because there's this parent and then children and only after the children write to the area this pss increases to the gigabyte and and then this also this thing this counter that says private clean or dirty and that's exactly the uss counter that says uh, these are the pages that are only mapped in this process and there's no other process sharing them and to make this uh, more user friendly there exists this smm tool that does the reading of the proc file system for you so if we tried it on our process after the fork it would show uss pss and rss all one giga one gigabyte no no before the fork after the fork the PSS of all those 11 processes would drop to this 111th and we could see that USS is almost nothing because all of the almost all of the pages of the process are shared between the children and only after the writes it all goes to a gigabyte again so so this is how you can uh, debug uh, or accurately uh, get an idea of which process uses how much memory if you're prepared to pay the cost but uh, let's go back uh, to the kernel memory uh, because as I showed some of the fields that should add to the total might be the sum of it might be less than total uh, which was 600 megabytes in my case but if you see it's much more or it's growing over time then it probably means something in the kernel is leaking the memory and uh, you might want to find who that is so we have some uh, tools for that or debugging options so for example config page owner is something you can build into your kernel and distribute it and if if nobody uses it it has no overhead because there are static keys and other tricks so only if you boot with page owner on it starts collecting the data which has some overhead but you're only doing it when when need, when you need to and you don't need to recompile the kernel and yeah you can have it to to uh, print all the allocation stacks for allocations that are uh, 
where there are so many outstanding allocations as, uh, over some threshold you set. So this is how the example output looks like. Yeah, we can see that this number of base, base pages or higher order pages, but uh, sum up as a base pages. Uh, and this is the allocation stack uh, uh, that uh, lead to those allocations. So if there's if there's some stack that grows over time, it might be a memory leak or maybe it's already high when you check. For slab caches, we have slab debug option where you can say uh, uh, that, for example, for the, all the kmalloc caches with this u uh, parameter, it will do similar thing on the slab allocator level as the page owner, and then you can uh, read the data from the uh, debugfs file system. There's, this doesn't support the threshold. On, on the other hand, it sorts from the largest users. So, yeah, this is a similar kind of output. You have allocation stack for the biggest user of the kmalloc64 cache. Recently, uh, alternative to this was merged the memalloc profiling, which intends to eventually be so low overhead that you would run it in production and not only in debugging, but currently there's still some overhead, but they are working on it. Uh, the downside is that you don't get uh, full allocation stacks, but only the, uh, the file and uh, line which contains the allocation. And behind the scenes, there's a lots of macros that have to wrap to allocations to make it possible. But yeah, if it if they s work on the overhead and it's production uh, ready, then it might be useful. And what if you don't want to actually rebuild the kernel or even a reboot, and you want to find who who is uh, leaking memory? That's possible if. Uh, if the thing that's leaking memory is still leaking it, that didn't stop yet because you can use tracing to capture the allocation and freeing events and uh, yes, store the allocation backtraces for those allocations that were not yet freed. And you can then post-process the, the, the trace or or there's even a, a there's even a BCC tools based um, uh, tool that will do this in, in within BPF, so I can run it, and every 10 seconds it will tell me how many uh, what are the most I think 10 most outstanding uh, stacks. And I have some I have some uh, kernel module that intentionally leaks uh, 100 megabyte memory in about 30 seconds and we can see that it starts to becoming prominent. It's this one, but you can also see that it's uh, yeah, it's it's doing it from a K thread, but this symbol is not actually the right one. I don't know if it's because the module is out of the tree, so it doesn't have the correct K all sims metadata. But yeah, it's this memory, it's this module, just just wrong, wrongly attributed. And if I remove it, it should uh, it should free the memory. Yeah. So uh, when I first was trying it, I removed it, and it was still showing me that the memory is occupied. And I was like, hmm, "Is the KMM leak wrong then?" Now, I the 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 freeing was wrong. So, <laughs> uh, so I had a bug in my module, and it was correctly telling me I have a memory leak. So yeah, this can be uh, useful. 
and you don't need to uh, reboot or anything. Yeah, the very last thing I wanted to say, because some people are uh, confused by it, although it's uh, quite uh, a shift of the topic from the thing before, but I promised it in the annotation. So, uh, some one detail about swapping. Uh, the kernel used to be, uh, like the reclaim used to be very biased against anonymous memory and uh, whenever it needed to reclaim a memory, no, I mean a biased against the page cache, so it would throw away the page cache uh, as much as possible and only then uh, go and swap out anonymous memory. So you would uh, rarely see the swap being used unless you were stressing the system so mu uh, like very much. But suddenly, after the changes around 5.9, people started to think on a systems like, yeah, imagine you have a system that fits into, fits the workload into memory, so doesn't need to swap anything, but there's some overnight uh, activity like antivirus scan or, or some backup that accesses tons of files on the file system. And before 5.9, uh, this page cache growth that uh, caused by this overnight activity would result only in page cache reclaim and and uh, there would be no swap usage. But suddenly you might find some swap being used after such overnight activity and so what's wrong? Is there a, a, a bug in the kernel? No, it means the kernel got so better at tracking of how much uh, or which pages are actually used and which are not used, that it can recognize that repeated the overnight activity that repeats over uh, once over a night is actually reusing some pages, but there are some anonymous pages sitting there that nobody ever touches because some process allocated them but didn't ever need to use them so it's actually correct to swap out these pages because nobody ever touches and then you can have more page cache so if you see such behavior then please don't assume that it's a bug and yeah that's all from me so thank you Two questions. Hi. Uh, regarding memory leak, we also have gaming leak in the kernel. Uh, is that something that, uh, what's your opinion about like false positives, false negative, and enable that in production? Uh, I, I, I think that uh, yeah, it should be similar to the user space BPF trace thing, but uh, I, I think it's useful for uh, debugging or like the testing done by the kernel robots, but I don't think it's a production. Uh, uh, I, I'm not familiar with uh, using it in production, so I guess it's there's it has some overhead that you wouldn't want. But for debugging, it can be also used. Okay, last question. Uh, thank you for the for the, uh, the explanation of uh, Memanfo. I was searching for the description uh, since a long time, and <laughs> it was not very available. Uh, as a nice uh, echo to the Paul uh, uh, presentation from uh, this morning, do you know how, how many times, or if it's possible to configure when it's updated? Because I guess it's a snapshot done something like every second for the, the output, the values are in uh, proc memanfo. Uh, the question is how how oh. often can I snapshot proc meminfo? Yeah, or? is it uh, when it's updated? It's not live. Oh, yeah, I I think it's it's live, or or maybe some of the counters may be backed by some distributed counters that will 
only become accurate after they cross a threshold, but it should be de de defined so you can snapshot it as often you want and there's no overhead, unlike the S maps, which, I, as I've explained, can block the process that you are snapshotting. Okay. Okay. Okay, thanks again. Or. <laughs> you were asking. Uh, one more question about your RSS accounting when it's shared with Copy on Write. Have you considered uh, showing the RSS that is not shared versus the one that is shared? If you have a ref number of user account per page, you could use that to be one or more. So when it's more, you, should show, you could show it in a different section. And then you could do global accounting on the overall system. Count the number of pages that are two or more user and uh, basically do uh, just an average number of users per page and use that as a, as a divisor to this shared RSS portion. That might be an approximate that may be good enough. Yeah, it sounds like something to consider, but I would have to think about it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs>